It's the 7th of June, 1981. Operation Babylon is underway. Fourteen Israeli fighter jets are on a high-risk secret mission. Their goal? The part French-built atomic reactor, Osirak, near Baghdad. The pilot's video of the attack shows an enthralling scene. Without any precise maps or auxiliary tanks, the Israeli pilots play out a daring escapade. In the cockpit that day was squadron leader Amir Nashami, one of the Israeli Air Force's leading pilots. He had a prominent eyewitness, King Hussein of Jordan. So on Sunday uh, afternoon, the king was sitting on his yacht, and all of a sudden, three o'clock in the afternoon, and you see airplanes coming, eight F-16s and six F-15s. But he immediately understood, and he told Rabin that he immediately called his uh, command post in, uh, in Amman to tell the brothers that the Israelis is, is coming to attack Baghdad. That's what he said. Uh, but <laughs> I, we don't know. Uh, maybe the the the, uh, the officers in in charge in in Amman thought the king is drunk, or the officers in Baghdad thought the the officers in Amman is drunk. But nobody did anything about it because it was a complete surprise to, to them when we came. Yes, I, I remember that we went over uh, a resort area of Iraqis. There was a big uh, lake. And there was a resort area, and we flew over it. We saw many people, you know, with with a, with a bathing suit. We was flying so low, about thirty meters. We can see them, and they were waving to us like this. <laughs> because we and and, and in, in, interesting enough, at one point, people wanted to take off the signs of the Israeli Air Force, and it uh, for some reason it got to Begin, and Begin said, "What?" No way. We are not going to attack like thieves at night. You will put these signs of the Israeli Air Force and the Magen David, you know, the, the Shield of David. I want it this big on the airplanes. And, uh, and the people down there probably saw it, but they just waving to us, they, you know, very friendly. What happened to the world if Saddam Hussein would have a nuclear bomb in 1991? Just imagine. I think it saved the Iraqi people for something that could have been a disaster. Today, preventative attacks against enemies who threaten the stability of Israel is still part of the military strategy. The Israeli army has also massively increased its strike power since 1981. They don't deal in meaningless threats. We get to it will depend on what we're trying to do. The uranium enrichment program in Iran is far bigger than the requirements for a civilian nuclear program. A nuclear plant in Natanz now has a successful centrifuge program capable of making weapons grade uranium. In nearby Asfahan and Pachim, there are large, heavy water nuclear technology centers. It would be possible to bomb these centers, but there is no hard evidence of nuclear weapons as yet. Military experts state that the lack of surprise and the fact the plants are scattered across the country makes attacks difficult. My belief is it is going to be difficult, much more difficult than attacking uh, the Iraqi uh, nuclear plant back in 81 by Israel, but it's not impossible and it is a bit easier for the United States, more difficult for, for Israel. And there are several problems involved in this difficulty. One is for Israel is a distance. From Israel to, to the Iranian border is about uh, a thousand kilometers. Now we had to add, add several hundred kilometers until the area of the nuclear site, which is more or less in this area. Uh, it is more or less double, almost double than the distance to, to the Iraqi nuclear plant back in 81. The problem is 
What happens if these political units uh, do not work and Iran continues with its nuclear program? Then the option would be a, a military one, uh, possibly by the United States, perhaps even by Israel as well. David Matai is an Iranian Jew who recently fled his country. He calls for substantially harder stance against the mullahs. The Ayatollahs, he believes, will only respond to hard sanctions. The official state doctrine of the mullahs is to extinguish Israel. Therefore, they need the atomic bomb. Ever since they came to power, they have bred hatred against the Israelis among the population. Can the Israelis really limit the nuclear ambition of the Iranians, military or otherwise? This question is ringing around Jerusalem. If the Iranians should get hold of nuclear weapons, it would, they fear, spark a nuclear arms race. Saudi Arabia and Egypt would be next. This is the scenario they are confronted with daily here. On the fringes of this protest against Gaza Strip settlers, Iran is also a hot topic. I have no doubt that Iran is not only a threat for Israel, but for the entire world. Uh, these, these, this is what a, it's called a crazy state. There's a few of them around. They have no... Um, they will stop at nothing. Their agenda is world domination. What do you expect uh, from the Israeli government? How, to, how should the Israeli government The Israeli react? government and the rest of the world, if they care about surviving, had better do something and not just talk. Iran's uh, financing the Hezbollah, training them and arming them. Hezbollah forces are present in Lebanon and in the Gaza Strip, uh, and uh, Iran has stated over two generations its hostility towards Israel. It believes that the state of Israel, the independent Jewish state of Israel, should not exist. And therefore I think it is a threat. But I think it's a, such a major threat that Israel alone will not be able to deal with it. Israeli and American strategists talk of a red line that Iran cannot cross. If, for example, Tehran stops nuclear inspections, or if Iranian technicians close the nuclear fuel cycle, military action could then be justified. The ideology of the Ayatollahs is not very different from that of uh, the Nazis, from that of uh, Adolf Hitler uh, 65 years ago. So, of course, we have very good reason for concern. Uh, all the more so since this is not a very rational regime. And Rafsanjani, which is a prominent figure in Iran, already said two years ago that uh, Iran can afford, unlike Western democracies, few million casualties in nuclear war. Uh, so, of course, we have very good reason for concern. Until now, they didn't solve all the technical problems, yes. They still have to make many research and development. So this is a good time to stop them.